Hey everyone, this is going to be the starting video of a series of videos that I plan on doing uh, for the rest as long as my channel's around. These are going to be how to uh, build videos. And basically what I'm planning on doing is showing exactly how I build some of my more prominent homemades that you guys seem to like. Excuse me. This will be starting with uh, a snap bow, which is a very near and dear blaster to my heart because it was one of the first homemades I ever built. Now, these are going to be quite long videos, and the first one, is, which is this one, is going to be about the materials and the tools that I specifically use to build one. Now, I made these first segments quite early in the morning, so I'm kind of a little tired. I kind of missed a couple things, so at the very, very end, I will have a scrolling materials list showing everything that you're going to need. Now, uh, you know, snap bows, they're fairly easy to build, and that's why I want to start with them. Uh, because I just want to try to get used to myself, uh, kind of showing you guys how I do it. Because I usually don't like to sit down and do something all at once. So, uh, most of this is going to be kind of a long, dreary, kind of showing you guys a layout of stuff. But um, the build videos I'm planning on being, you know, you watching me drill a hole here, uh, tap this, uh, glue this together. Uh, so, if you guys like this video, let me know. And uh, future uh, things I'm thinking about are maybe like a drap bow right up like you guys have all wanted forever and you won't stop bothering me about uh, rainbow pistols maybe a plus bow build guy but that's kind of self-explanatory and it would kind of uh, I don't know it would take forever and uh, maybe a pump snap guide but uh, after I think the, for the couple simple homemades I think I'm moving to maybe uh, blaster modification like 3k's and like uh, uh, SVT 4b's and ultimate missile blasts and uh, things like that of that nature. So if you guys like this idea, let me know below. These are going to be long, they're going to be very thorough, and I will have a complete material list at the end of this video. So you guys stick around, and we're going to go right over to my bed where I've laid out everything that we're going to need, and I'll talk to you guys in about a second. Alright everyone, we're going to start today with the uh, non-hardware parts, uh, the PVC and wood parts that I usually use whenever I build a snap bow. And we're going to start from the top and kind of work our way down. I think we're going to go from uh, left to right in a downward fashion so that you can keep up. The one on the very top there, the piece of pipe, is a short piece of three-quarter inch PVC pipe. And that'll be what holds our stock mount on. And that's pretty critical that it's three-quarter inch because it nests the uh, wood in there quite nicely with a couple reps of e-tape. And next to that, uh, you'll see the two uh, sort of angle pieces there. One's a 90 degree and one's a 45. Those are both uh, three quarter inch fittings as well. Those are for the stock. Those will help it bend downwards at 90 degrees and then a small cup at the bottom to help hug into your shoulder. So that's, you know, where the, those just go on the stock whenever you install it. So we're going to kind of put those off to the side while we build the main body. And uh, over here to the far left and up towards the top corner, we will see a one inch to half inch reducing bushing. I usually get mine at Lowe's because they don't have uh, the weird hole uh, kind of around the ring, but uh, it really doesn't matter where you get one. But uh, that's quite a, an important piece, and that's what you need for the front bushing. Next to that, you see our plunger tube, which is uh, 12 and a half inches of 1.25 PVC. Now, I they say to usually use 12. I like to use 12 and a half just to make sure it gave a little bit more of a uh, little bit more room for the handle to get mounted. So that's why I use that, that length specifically. And next to that you see the 3 quarter inch end cap which will be drilled to 5 eighths to hold the plunger rod in the center. Uh, you, can get these, you can get these parts anywhere guys. Most uh, good hardware stores should have them. I get a lot of my PVC from Home Depot and Lowe's in conjunction. But uh, that's really your choice where you get them. And underneath the plunger tube there you see we have a half inch piece of PVC. Uh, a little bit shorter than the plunger tube body. All these parts will be cut down eventually. These are all just rough cuts for uh, you know video purposes because they won't have to measure and give you guys exact stuff. But uh, underneath that, you'll see a half inch T with a short piece of half inch PVC stuck in it. That will become our foregrip, as this guy is for a snap bow with a stock and a foregrip, like most of them are. Uh, that's gonna take that takes a little bit of modification to make it fit, but it's not so bad. And I'll show you guys that later down the road whenever we get the body built. Uh, 
kind of here in the middle is actually a piece of the wood I use. It is a piece of poplar. Uh, it is three quarter inch wide, which uh, with a few reps of E-tape fits really well in, the, in both the, uh, the three quarter inch fittings and the three quarter inch PVC pipe. So that's why I use that size. And uh, that's poplar. You can get it also in oak and probably some other woods too, but uh, poplar stains really nicely and seems to work pretty well. So, and down below on the very bottom there, you'll see a 13 inch piece of half inch C PVC. Now this is the type of PVC that we use for barrels and um, all sorts of other things. And you can find this usually near copper. It is copper sized piping. That's why it's called C PVC. And there you see I've got a end cap on one end and a T on the other. And uh, that'll be your pullback on the right side and that'll be where your plunger head mounts on the left side. So that is the PVC materials that we're going to need. As well as some of the wood. Uh, you will need more wood than in what is uh, pictured. I usually buy it in four foot pieces and that should be more than enough. Uh, so I guess now we'll move on to the hardware portion which will be a little bit more um, in depth because I'll explain what all the hardware's for and uh, give you a list of what you need to buy if you want to build one exactly like I do. So stick in there guys we're going to move on to the next segment. Alright guys here is the second segment of the materials video and this one I decided to do a little more personally where I can grab stuff because this is kind of more of an in-depth thing and this is kind of difficult to explain and I'd rather be able to pick things up and show you guys exactly what I use and why we use it. Now let's start from where the front of the blaster is and here we have four three-eighths pan head uh, sheet metal or, or bolts, six thirty-second thread and uh, I use those because I have a tap for those and they go right they go just the right length on the inside to hold the bushing in place. Now, one of the most complex things that people usually have trouble with is the plunger head parts as we see here. Uh, what you need is you need two one and a quarter inch, three sixteenth inner diameter fender washers. They are about a sixteenth thick and I buy these at uh, Ace Hardware for about fifteen cents each and you need two of those. Set those up here. Then what you need is you need a 3 16th ID or for a number 10 bolt by I think this is 3 8 OD nylon spacer now that is important as well because this gives you the necessarily necessary room in between the two washers to fit your plunt, fit your nail in whenever it catches now rubber washers you need two of them you need two different sizes and you need a one and a half inch OD 3 16th ID 1 16th thick neoprene rubber washer. That is going to be the main sealing surface for your snap. And then you need a 1 and a quarter OD 3 16th ID as well uh, rubber washer 3 16th thick same thing. Now those will con in conjunction give you a very good seal if you drill your plunger rod right. And then we need a I believe is an inch long uh, I can't get it to focus a inch long 10 30 second uh, bolt and that's what holds your whole plunger head together oops and we'll set that up there and then next you need a number eight I know number eight sounds weird finishing washer I get them in stainless steel or bronze um, but it definitely needs to be a number eight and just trust me on this it helps your plunger head cup due to the shape of it and then you need a 10 30 second uh, nylon lock washer and it has a little piece of nylon on the inside of it that helps lock it on there so it won't loosen over time alright now to hold all your plunger rod and stuff together and the uh, let's see and the and the plunger head on and the pull you need you're going to need five six thirty second three eighths length regular machine bolts uh, just the same ones as you use up front now for the trigger parts, which are kind of complicated, I buy my plastic clothespins at Walmart in the laundry section. They are hollow, and we'll be filling that with epoxy putty uh, later on. And I like them because they're good and strong, and uh, they can be reinforced quite well. Now I get these at Home Depot, and this is a one and a half inch long on each each length here, angle bracket. And this is what you use for your trigger. Uh, I've started buying the stainless steel ones recently because they seem a bit stronger to me. Uh, they're about 450 for a pack of four 
and they come with nice uh, stainless steel bolt uh, wood screws. Excuse me, which we'll use to mount our handle later. And then you need a about a one and a half inch, one and three eighths length roofing nail that is one eighth of an inch in diameter. Uh, pretty standard stuff. That's what your catch is. And then we need a myriad of small bolts. Oh, I dropped one. Now, we have here in my hand, we have uh, three, yes, we have three quarter inch long uh, bolts, 632nd again. Uh, I use those to help hold the e-putty on the inside of the triggers. I just started doing that recently. And here we have a, uh, I believe it's called a flat uh, 632nd, 3 8 length screw that helps hold the trigger together. And uh, then we have two of our 3 8 length, uh, let me see. Yeah, one of our 3 8 length uh, screws, the same ones on the bushing and the same ones from the plunger head. Now, I forgot to throw this in the last uh, segment, but we have our wood handle template. Um, this is just a modified rainbow pump handle. Uh, I just shortened the top of it by a little bit, and it just, you know, I might give you guys measurements if you ask, but it's pretty easy to figure out. And then from the, you know, where we got that, it came with wood screws, I said. We need three of the wood screws they give you, which is about three quarter inch long flathead, to put the handle into the blaster. And then I think we need about 15 to 20 of these number six by half inch long pan head Phillips sheet metal screws. These are what you're going to use for your stock uh, mount and everything. And let's see, right here you're going to need three of your flathead, three eighths long, uh, six thirty second bolts, and those are what hold your stock onto the blaster. Um, a lot of these we have to cut down, but um, I'll show you guys that in the next, uh, I guess the next series of the video. And that's pretty much most of the hardware. Anything I forgot, I will definitely mention later on, but I, I think that's most of the materials that I'm gonna have to show you. I guess we'll move on to tools next. All right, guys, again, I'm gonna be sitting in a little bit closer with this part of the video, just so I can be, uh, as I said before, a little more intimate, just describing why we need everything. And uh, let's hop right in, and I will jump into the adhesives portion. Uh, you're going to need epoxy putty. Uh, pretty standard stuff. I get mine for $4 at Walmart, and it's great stuff. That is Loctite all-purpose. I'm going to use Loctite Super Glue Professional Grade. I got this in a tub from uh, from Home Depot. cost me about 6 bucks, but this tube uh, will last me pretty much forever. And your standard silicone uh, grease. This is Danko. You can get it, um, I think, at Home Depot or Lowe's. But you have to make sure it is the silicone grease you see there and not the waterproof stuff because the silicone is what actually won't eat your rubber or anything else. So that's important. And you need your plumber's goop. Uh, get it at Walmart, $4 a tube. Plumbing goop, great for sealing up air gun parts and things like that. And you need packaging tape uh, for your front bushing to help it uh, sit nice and straight. And you need a roll of E-tape, probably more than this, probably a whole roll is what I would uh, go with. Just standard E-tape. Uh, I guess let's move on to some of the, uh, I guess let's go ahead and show the drill bits that I use. Uh, I'll have to show each one individually since they're kind of, each one has its individual use. Uh, 1 16th drill bit for drilling pilot holes for things. I drill a lot of pilot holes when I build just because it makes them cut cleaner. Um, a 764 drill bit. That is so. That is for when you tap things. It's the perfect size to tap from for 632nd. You need a 1 8 drill bit for, to drill for your uh, for your catch nail. You need a 3 16th uh, drill bit for your plunger head. Um, this one's uh, well. Here it is. It's a 5 8 spade bit. This is what you're going to use to drill out your three quarter end cap at the back to. Uh, allow your CPVC to pass through. And this tool might not be necessary for most people, but um, I found that I've really liked it so far. And it is a, let me get a piece of PVC to show you guys. It is a glass and tile bit, and it's pretty long as you see here, but uh, it's one half inch in diameter, and it's got these cutting flutes on it. And the reason I bought this is because a lot of people make them with snap-on snap -on handles, which you can go search Nerve Haven for that, or uh, you know other forms of handles. What this actually allows me to do is take this, and this actually will drill. If you drill a hole in the top here, it'll allow you to countersink down here in the bottom because it's long enough, you see. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. 
But um, what that allows me to do is have no external screws showing on the handle, so all three screws on the inside will all be countersunk on the inside. So that was a $14 bit. Now you may not need that if you're doing another handle mounting method, but this is me showing you how I do how I do it, and that's how I do it. I went out and I spent $14 on this bit, and I have not looked back since. Now you're gonna want uh, sharpies. I like uh, I like having a regular one and a fine tip one. That's just so you can mark things a little more precisely. I use an architectural ruler. These aren't cheap. This is like ten dollars, um, but it allows you to draw perfectly straight lines on PVC. As you can see here with my demonstration piece, it lays on really flat and straight. If you hold it there, it'll stay straight all the way around, and that's important. Now you need a couple screwdrivers. I use one smaller one and I use one bigger one. Both are Phillips head, pretty standard. Uh, regular pair of pliers, again, pretty standard. Um, this is kind of a neat PVC reaming tool. is isn't really necessary. It helps finish off your edges a little bit. But basically those teeth in there cut it at kind of a bevel in and out for each side. And that's pretty cool. I got it at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap and I've liked it a lot so far. Now if you don't have a chop saw like I do out in my garage, you can use a hacksaw. Um, but hacksaws are usually a pain in the butt. Chop saws cut pretty straight, but if you have to, you can use a hacksaw. Uh, hand drill, uh, pretty important. Uh, really important, actually, to drill all your holes with. Uh, I don't know what a good voltage is. I use a 12 volt one, uh, rechargeable, but uh, hand drill, important. Now, you guys, a lot of you guys might not have this, but it is a 630 second tap. What this does is you drill your 764 hole in your PVC and then you can just slowly twist this in, backing it out every now and then, and it will cut threads into the PVC for all your bolts. Um, as you saw from those, the, all the bolts that I just showed you guys, those were all 630 second thread and that's what this cuts is a 630 second thread. Now I paid like 8 bucks for this little set here with a handle and I bought this separately at um, an auto parts store actually. So. If you don't order online, you can check that out. It's really useful to have. I use it every single day, multiple times. And I think that's most of the tools, guys. I guess I'll go ahead and end this video by saying thank you for watching. And the next video will be a part one of our build. And I will show you guys how to mostly mount the bushing and um, some other small stuff. So I'll start rolling my materials list now. And thanks, guys. Leave me a comment down below. Leave me a rating. And happy. hope you guys all have a nice day. And... Uh, wherever you're at. All right, talk to you later, guys.